Welcome back to When Bits Hit the Fan, where we keep an eye on tech news so you don't have to. And when bits hit the fan, we bring it right to you. I'm your host, Taylor Uden. While James is out on the road this week, we'll bring you a continuation of last week's episode and guest, Anthony Leatherwood. We broke his interview into two parts because we just loved what he had to say about the trends in cyber and what's coming up with AI, what to look out for, the entire cyber landscape. We're excited about this second half. Let's go ahead and jump right into the second half with CISO Anthony Leatherwood. Enjoy. Being prepared is making sure you have the right investment, the right solution, the right platforms, and the right EDR solution in place to protect your organization and contain it, right? So so after all those attacks occurred, we decided to shift our news stories to Colonial Pipeline and JBS Food Systems. Mm -hmm. Um, Those impacted America's supply chain, the new supply chain attack. And when when that occurred, um, we saw the government then step in with new litigation for certain industries, one on electrical providers, one on midstream providers. Um, There's been rumors that more is coming. And that Mm -hmm. came from the White House through the through a memo of what minimum things that we should all be doing. Is it if you put on your your uh, your crystal ball? I don't know how you put that on. If you look to be your crystal ball, there you go. 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 (laughs) Then what? What what would that what would that future look like? Are we all going to live in a world where the, the government's pushing what we have to do at a minimum standard? I mean, the, the, you know, with Biden's executive order, right? He just issued it not not too long ago this year. Uh, cybersecurity is important, right? And and I, I, companies are starting to realize, right, from your universities to your local state governments to your state to private entities that you know cybersecurity is important, right? And if you want to be viable in the supply chain, you have to protect it, right? I think with this new focus, right, that's a long time coming, right? I, I call it a harbinger, right? Uh, did I say that right? No brainer? Har- harbinger, right? I call it a massive oh, kind of brain yeah. of, of activity, sure. right? Not just from the U.S. government, but from the public and private sector. I think with all these things at in tangent, you know, coming into play, I think it, the focus here right now is on cybersecurity. Folks are at, at the point where they're saying that, hey, if I don't focus on this, right, I won't, I will no, no longer be in business. You, you know, I think folks realize that, and that's why the focus is there. So I, I hope you're not getting tired of hearing it, but you know that we've been preaching that the four things you have to have to make sure that you're in good shape is a clean copy of your data, a proactive threat hunter, visibility in your security gaps, and an incident response plan. Uh, but if you could make one recommendation to the CEOs and the executive teams that are listening, what what would you tell them? Do you need to make sure before end of year you have at least looked at or shored up? You know, I, I'm a big ISO twenty seven thousand one fan. I, it's just explain what that is real quick. Yeah, ISO is international standard, right? And it includes a lot of different controls, right? You have a lot of controls out there. You got CMMC, you have COVID, you know, you have ISO, yeah. Multiple multitude of standards out there, but what ISO is good at is, is taking these controls, right? These common controls that are important to protecting the company and the industry, and the SMB, and making sure that they're deployed, right? So you do that. You know, the first and most important thing any company company could do is a risk assessment, right? You know. Across any CISO, any CIO, risk assessment is the key to understanding what's there and what's impacting you. Not just a VRA, but a larger risk assessment as a whole. Larger risk assessment for the organization. VRAs is really what you're- Subchapter. Yeah, where you're assessing product and services, right? If I needed them. Right. Right. But the other part of that too is, uh, I think we spoke about this earlier, was the assets, right? Knowing exactly what assets are protected or or connected rather on your network, right? You talk to SMB, you, you talk to enterprise, you say, can, can I get a full list of all your assets that's connected to the network? Most of the time you get a question mark, right? You, you don't get a good response there, right? It's but, definitely an area where people think they know. I know what employees I have, they all have a laptop, therefore I know. Yeah, think they know, but you know, if you conduct an audit in the environment, you find out differently, right? You know, so don't get me wrong, some, some organizations do have that level of granularity and they understand what's connected to the network, right? But the idea is that secondarily after the risk assessment, 
that that asset inventory would be key. Uh, that's going to be the next most important. I don't want you to get alarmed, but mm -hmm. I've worked here 11 years. Yeah. I have three laptops at home yeah. that you may not know I have. Okay. Well, How yeah. about that? Is that what you mean? Let me do some checking on it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know for certain that they were fully like removed from everything, but that that that's an area where I feel like a lot of our business yeah. leaders forget to consider that let, listen, who, who are they gonna attack first? Your yeah. executive team, your CEO, your CFO. Yeah. If that person's been in the company a long time, yeah. they've certainly been through some laptops. I mean you, you, you have an SMB struggle with this, but enterprises as well, you know, running SAP or whatever major system they have. You know, CRM tools, right? Mm -hmm. JML, it's called joiner relievers, right? So, uh, you know, joiner, I'm a new joiner to the organization, mover, uh, mm -hmm. lateral or promoted within the organization, lever, I'm le leaving the organizations. Uh, a lot of um, organizations have issues with keeping up with those type of movements, right? And I think part of it, what you want to do is make sure that you understand the JML process and make sure you can account for who's in your organizations, who's connected and who's gone, right? Those state changes are important. That's good. Yeah. We have a, a, a personal wish too to not be uh, hacked. So um, I know yeah. that there was the a giant push for identity theft protection. Um, that was what, four or five years ago. It seems like everybody was buying something they could that make sure their identity wouldn't get stolen. Yeah. Um, right, right. I know the credit card companies are doing their end of it. Your, your, your applications you sign into now at the MFA, but there's mm -hmm. still a concern about our own personal data and will it ever get, uh, hacked or picked up? What measures do you recommend people take and, and maybe what's too far? I mean, you have some industry regulation, you know, some products out there, identity locks and things of that sort, but. Well, it was, I'm big on prevention more than detection, right? I, I think you, you get smart on where your data is located. You get smart on leveraging encryption, you know, across any of your sensitive data, especially FI data or whatever data you may have. And you get smart on, you know, one key where, where I kind of advise SMBs is that, you know, you have accounting software that's probably web-based. Use a dedicated browser, right? you know, for that accounting software. Don't, you know, don't use the general browser, you know, your employees used to access the internet. Use that dedicated browser and it's only to be used for the accounting software. You limit your, your threat surface, as we call it, and you limit your exposure and your risk, right? Because we all know one of the most important, you know, life is first, right? You want to protect life, but we all know that SMBs is important for the revenue, you know, liquidity to, to remain, remain intact. Sure. Yeah. Business interruption would be second to life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for exactly. sure. I would, right. I would imagine life comes first. Yeah. Life I, is I'm, always the most Some important. CEOs mm -hmm. might argue otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Life is most important. I okay. mean, at the end of the day, we're all here to, to protect life. You, you know. This is a completely, the mo by far, this is the most important question. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. We're going to finish on this. Yeah. Yeah. You can only go to one barbecue joint the rest of your life. Which okay. barbecue joint are you going to? Man, that's that's a, that's a tough one for me. Uh, I I actually, you know, if I had the rest of my life, mm -hmm. I would. Uh, All the other ones closed down. There's only one left. Just cook, get home. Cook got, at home. Got the smoker at home. I find you know. I find your ability to analyze the risk and, mm -hmm. and recognize that you're going to isolate somebody's business by say, saying a name. <laughs> And therefore, taking the easy way out to home. Yeah, it's I, uncanny. You're good at that. I, I could, but I, I think the the key is the smoke and the flavor that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You get the you know what you what you like or what you know. Just like SMBs, they kind of know what they're looking for, right? In products and services, right? You kind of know what you're looking for at home, and then you can cook the best barbecue you possibly so you, can. So you build yours at home as opposed to outsource it. You see what I did there? Mm. I would outsource mine. You would. Yeah, because, well, I, I'd like to go to my kids' sporting events and games in the morning uh -huh. and, and, and not worry about that barbecue pit while I'm gone. Okay. And then if I come back and turn it on, I don't want to take a shower right after because I'm all smoky. Uh -huh. I like to go to, to Pinkerton's and have a, a, a dollar beer on a Thursday and, okay. and some brisket or yeah, over yeah. to Truth Barbecue and enjoy some uh, some tater tot casserole. Well, yeah. Yeah? yeah. I mean, part, part of, of it, pick one, part of it too, is, when you, you know, when you think about it, you're smoking the brisket at all, mm -hmm. but... You still have to go buy the brisket at the store, 
right. I don't want to make two trips. You know, so uh, yeah. I mean, if you have an own farm, and then you can you can handle it from that point. Right? But most, most folks don't have that type of acreage, right? So the idea is that you know, when you cook it at home, where you procure it from, you still have to procure that beef. You have to procure that brisket. Right. And so that's the most important thing to remember. You know, you can cook it at home how you like it, but you still have to procure it. So the next thing I want to cook is a Creekstone brisket at my house. What's Creekstone. In, yeah, that's a, a, one of the places that some of these joints like Pinkerton's like Goldie's up in Fort Worth are buying. From oh, Creekstone. Yeah, yeah. Where, where would you what would where would you procure? What would you make next that you haven't done yet? Ah, man, I, I've been watching. Whole hog? Oh man, I, I whole hog. That's that's. I'm I'm an IT guy, so you know security. So whole hog, I would be totally lost. Uh, security, you know, like <laughs> so I could secure it, right? Maybe, hurt maybe, maybe we'll have some uh, some IoT devices connected to measure the temperature, right? And they need to secure that. We a need meter. to secure that connection, yeah. right? But that's when I, I work with the professionals. You know that that you know this is what they do, right? So. So what would what do you think it'd be next if you could go to the store now and pick something up that you're looking forward to cooking? What would you want to do? I don't know, man. My, my wife has been talking about uh, you know cooking some some you know like you got Franklin. They they pick pick the what do you call it the, the hog? Uh, I'm not a not a smoker, but you, you know you you smoke out the not the whole hog, mm -hmm. but it's the it's a pork butt. Yeah, the front shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Isn't that funny that they made yeah. the front shoulder the pork butt? Yeah, yeah. And the it's... back shoulder, the back hip is that's, a ham. That's weird. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I good, good. Thanks for the clarity. I, I no don't know problem. where the meat came from. But yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of anatomy. <laughs> I could teach you. <laughs> I know the wife was wanted me to focus on that. That's so a I, that's a great cut. I, I, I love to talk about that. Yeah, that's a fun one. I've been watching uh, uh, a couple. of videos yeah the, you, you mentioned franklin i think yeah, i know yeah. where you're headed with that yeah, yeah, you bought that master class didn't oh yeah, yeah 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 i you know definitely you know it's a service and i i think he he has good instructions mm -hmm. on the master class now anthony's dropping some mm -hmm. wisdom on us guys mm -hmm. so uh it's it's fair that you can go guess and check and you can try to cook your own great brisket and pork mm -hmm. butts at your house but mm -hmm. if you want to uh learn how to do it right the first time and not waste that investment in time and money you can join center in many of our marketing events as we talk about uh, how to procure and produce some of the best brisket turkey and soon maybe even whole hog i don't whole know hog. just throwing it out there we okay. might be doing a center whole hog okay center whole hog well that was my nickname <laughs> in high school <laughs> okay all right well anthony thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today this has been outstanding really appreciate it Thank you, sir. You uh, come back and join us some other time? Oh, yeah. Any time you guys have a podcast, just feel free to have a drop by. A number of the people listening are our prospects and customers. I'd love for them to be encouraged to reach out to us directly on security questions oh, yeah. they have. Are you oh, open to, to touching those? Any, any SMB, even large enterprise, uh, want to reach out to us to get some directional guidance. Or if they want our product or services, I'm totally open to that. 24-7. They can call us anytime. They can definitely call us anytime, and we do have people picking up the phones, but I'd love it if general requests would hit our info uh, mailbox. So info at centertechnologies.com, uh, direct it to Anthony or to James or to Taylor, uh, our producer, and you can uh, make sure we get that question in front of Anthony. He'll get back with you directly. Definitely. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Nothing Anthony enjoys more than talking to our customers and prospects about these security matters. Um, if any of the topics we discussed have driven any questions in your mind about how it might impact your business, we'd love to carry that conversation forward. Um, feel free to let your account executive know, but if you want to bypass that and go directly to Anthony, uh, email info at centertechnologies.com. Info at centertechnologies.com is a, a, a mailbox within Center that we watch on the marketing team. We'll forward those directly to Anthony and have him reach out direct to you.